After forming a continuous monofilament suture, it is necessary to use an Aberdeen knot for termination. Once the last bite has been made through the tissue, the suture is not pulled all the way through, leaving a loop through which the fingers of one hand can be passed. The bite of the suture is then handed to the fingers through the loop, creating a second loop. The first loop is tightened down by a seesaw action between the two hands holding the new loop and the single strand. The bite is again passed through the loop, forming another loop, with the previous one being tightened down as before. This manoeuvre is repeated at least six times. The final step is to bring the suture and needle through the loop and tighten firmly. Remember to leave a slightly longer tail when dividing the suture due to the memory of the monofilament material. Begin by crossing the right thread over the left and form a figure 4 shape by extending the right forefinger. At the crossing point, grasp both ends with the left hand and form a half hitch by twisting the right end under the left. The end of the right thread is held again and the action repeated to create a double half hitch. The first throw is snugged down, with the left thread moving away from the body so that the knot is square. The surgeon's knot is then completed as previously described. In this illustration, the tying hand has picked up the free end of the suture above the holding hand, and hence a forehand or index finger throw is required. This has to be completed with a backhand throw, with the knot being laid down in the opposite direction, so that crossing is an inevitability. A square knot results. If the tying hand lifts the free end underneath the holding hand, then the first throw by necessity is a backhand throw. And again, the knot completed with an index finger throw, crossing being required to secure the correct position of the knot's configuration. Often, when suturing skin, it may be useful to perform an instrument tie, since the needle holder will already be in your hand. In this demonstration, the tail of the suture is lying on the knot board, and the rubber tubes simulate the two wound edges to be approximated. Grasp the bite of the suture with the left hand, 
and hold the shaft of the needle holder with the right hand so that it is above the suture and parallel to the wound. Form one wind of suture around the needle holder, then take hold of the tip of the tail. The first throw is then tightened, with the left hand moving away from the body. The second throw is made with the needle holder again held parallel to the wound and above the suture. This is tightened with the left hand moving towards you, resulting in a secure reef knot. Tying a slip knot. A slip knot can be created by applying the consecutive throw onto the one limb of a ligature or suture and sliding it down a stem created by slight traction on the held limb. Two forehand or index finger throws are applied in succession and both slipped down the opposite strand which is held under slight tension to facilitate the process. The knot has to be completed with a square knot if knot stability is to be achieved. With the hand in a prone posture, the end of the suture is picked up between the thumb and the long finger and pulled towards the surgeon. In doing so, it is laid over the index finger. The other limb of the knot is then crossed over the index finger and, using the back of the nail of the index finger, the ligature is passed through the loop created and passed back into the holding hand. This manoeuvre requires purposeful wrist rotation. The free end is then pulled towards the surgeon. The fingers are then placed on top of the suture, the hand supinated, placed palm up, the suture crossed over the fingers of the tying hand, and again the free end delivered back into the fingers of the holding hand, bringing the end through the loop so created, and this time the free end is pulled away from the body, thus creating a square knot. This knot will be repeated with the free end of the ligature or the suture pointing towards the surgeon and the needle end away from the surgeon. The pickup is again important using the index finger and thumb with the hand fully pronated, the wrist is supinated, the free end is crossed over the fingers and again delivered into the fingers of the holding hand. On this occasion, the ligature is drawn away. The knot is then completed by placing the free end, holding it in the thumb and long finger on top of the index finger, and repeating the first maneuver of the previous knot using the nail of the index finger to loop into the holding hand. A square knot can be tied using two hands and this is particularly useful if equal lengths of suture material need to be left. Holding the two limbs in a crossed position in the first instance, the ring finger retracts the limb being held by the opposite hand so that the appearance of an inverted four is obtained. The thumb is inserted into the inverted four so created. The suture is placed on the thumb and brought through the gap into the holding hand and the suture laid down. The thumb of the left hand is then brought up underneath its held structure. The thumb is circled by the other limb. A pincer is created and the pincer is taken through the gap with the free end being placed into the pincer which retrieves it through the gap and donates it back to the tying hand. The knot is then laid down.
This knot lends itself to usage in tying a surgeon's knot. Again, the thumb is placed through the inverted four, and on this occasion, a double throw is placed prior to placing the suture in position. The thumb of the left hand is brought up underneath, encircled pincer created, limb retrieved, and brought through the knot and laid down in a square position. This two-handed method requires that the two free ends are of equal length. First, cross the right hand thread over the left. Then create a half hitch, so that the left end passes into the right hand and vice versa. The first throw is tightened down. The free end in the left hand is then passed over the right, reversing the actions in the first step to create a square reef knot. The next task is to tie at depth, and with the ligature mounted on an artery or Roberts forceps coming out of the tip of that forceps, the structure to be tied is encircled. A forehand throw, as in the first knot, is created. On this occasion, the knot is carefully placed using the index finger of the tying hand and the knot tightened down by a balanced pull of the two limbs of the suture so as to create no traction on the structure being tied. The knot is then completed with a backhand knot squaring and again placing the knot carefully to avoid any traction or pull on the structure being tied. An alternative method for termination of a continuous suture line is to form a reef knot using a double-stranded loop and the single-strand bite of suture. However, this is unsafe when using a monofilament suture as demonstrated in this clip. The double loop of suture has twice the memory of the single strand. Instead of a series of square knots, the single strand will tend to form loops around a straight section of double strand. When the ends are cut, the straight double strand of suture can simply slip out through the single strand loops, thus disrupting the knot.